In this video, we will discuss the problem loan integer. ठीक है. So, what is given in the question? You are given an array. Okay, you are given an array in which the frequency of every element is three, except one element that has frequency as one. And what you want to do? We want to return that particular element. So let's suppose if this is the given array, as it is given in the example two 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 nine five five five, the frequency of two is three, the frequency of nine is one, five is three. So we can definitely say nine is the number we want to return as an answer. It seems to be a very easy problem. Until we put some constraint on this, so first thing we put a constraint. We don't have to use any space because if we use a hash map or basically some data structure that will store the frequency of every integer, so we can definitely return. We can definitely uh, iterate over the hash map, and we can return. The integer that has frequency as one. So, on that case, it would be a very easy question if we remove any constraint from it. But we uh, we are having a constraint here, as we have to solve it in order of one space. So let us see how can we do it. Okay. So we have a constraint on space. We don't have to use any space. Okay. Now. If we are having this particular array, let's suppose two, 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 nine, five, five, five. If this is the array, then what we can do if we sort the array? If we sort the array, all the elements that are equal will come together. Okay. So for this particular array, if we sort it, then what will be the case after sorting? We would be having two, 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 five, 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 and nine. Okay, now all the elements that have their frequency as three are adjacent to each other, and the uh, and the element that has frequency as one is is uh, is not in the group of three. So what we can do, we can take a window of three, slide over the array, and For the element, if the starting and the ending of that particular window, if it is not equal, then we can definitely say that this is the particular element. Okay. So what I am saying, after sorting, we are sure that only one element is having its frequency as well. All the other are. Having the frequency as three, so we can take a window of three. So we have our pointer, one pointer at the starting of this window, and the other pointer at the ending of this window of size three. Now we would check if this window starting element and window ending element, if they both are equal, then uh, it is absolutely correct. Then uh, it will be having its frequency as three. Then we will move our i, our window starting pointer to the next set of elements, and now we again check if the window starting and window ending, the both are equal. Then we move to next set of elements. Now, if we move to next set of elements, our i would be here, and j would be something here, but. J has become out of bound, so we can definitely say that this this particular element is the element we are searching for. Okay, and uh, let me have one more example. Okay, let me have one more example. Let's suppose we are having two 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 nine 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 and four. Okay, uh, let us take five volts. Okay. Make it a little bit complicated, but you have got a hint. You just have to sort the array. You sort the array. After sorting, the case would be. After sorting, the case would be 
we are having all the elements grouped together that are equal so this would be the case now we will check for the window of size 3 if the window starting element and window ending element if they both are equal then it is well and good because we to wo wala element search karna na which have its frequency as 1 so we will move to the next window that is here and here now we can say ki the window starting element and the window ending element these two these two are not equal so what we will return we will return this window starting element okay we will return 4 and this is our answer okay so this is the approach that requires us a time complexity of n log n and for what purpose we require n log n to sort the array and plus n plus n time complexity to iterate over the array after sorting it in the worst case we will require n in this case we can definitely definitely return from this position that we can found the uh, we have found the element okay and the space here is order of okay so it seems uh, uh, if i code it it would be very easy i will surely drop a link in, uh, in the des uh, description of the code okay now is there any way we can optimize it of course yes because sorting doesn't seems to be a very intuitive solution okay Key, uh, we have to broaden our thinking for this particular question because we don't have to use any space we don't have to use sorting now what we are left with we have to do something with the number and to do something with the number we require we have to do bit manipulation okay or something with bits okay now what can we do let us take the example 222955 this is our given array now we know that our output is 9 let us write we do not know anything we just write the binary configurations of these numbers okay so for 2 it would be 1 0 okay for 9 it would be 1 0 0 1 okay for 5 it would be 1 uh, 1 0 1 Am I correct? Yes, I am. Now we know the binary configurations. Now what we want to do, we for a particular position, let us write. Uh, we have one 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 zero. We have one zero one zero one zero one zero one 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 zero one. So these are the binary configurations of all the elements of the array. This is for 2, 2, 2, 9, 5, 5, 5. Okay. Now we can see for a particular bit position the number of set bits. So what is the intuition behind the approach? We are going to count the number of set bit at a particular position. At a particular, uh, particular bit position, we are going to count the number of set bits and we're gonna mod it with three because for uh, because the number is occurring only one times and if we mod up because if let's suppose the bit here would be one 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 let's suppose we are having seven bit as one for this particular position now if we mod seven by three we will surely be getting one okay now let's suppose all are zero 
polar zero then we are definitely be getting zero so the intuition behind this approach is we have to find just the value or value of the bit value of the bit for the particular bit position so for the particular bit position we want to find the bit value for our element that we need to find that is the single occurring element okay because we can definitely get it so i will do a dry run over this approach okay uh, so 10 10 10 then i am having 1001 then i am having 101 101 101 okay for this particular from the rightmost bit uh, from the right for the rightmost bit we are going to find the number of set bits the set bit are 4 so if we mod it with 3 we would be having 1 simple count the set bit for this particular position uh, for this particular position we are having set bit as 3 and we will mod them with 3 we are going to find the bit value for this particular position for our element okay for this particular position we going to find the number of set bit count it would be 3 modded with 3 we going to get 0 for this particular position we will be getting 1 modded with 3 we will get now we can definitely say this is the binary representation of my single occurring element so we can definitely do this so i'm going to write the code for it okay step by step code likhing it okay so let us take an assumption ki 32 bit integer hai hamare paas it would be specified in the question ki 32 bit le rahe hain ya 64 bit okay so i am taking an assumption for this question we are having 32 bit number 32 bit integer okay so for every bit because we do not know uh, until which bit we have to search in so we are searching for all the 32 bits okay so for all the 32 bits we go now write our loop so this is for every bit position now for every bit position we have to traverse every number in the given array okay so i would be writing a four range loop so let's suppose my array name is arr now what what i will do i need to find the count so above here i would be initializing a variable int count equals to 0 that will count the number of set bits for the particular position and how will we find the set bit so we will do a simple bit manipulation trick so if x and 1 left shift i is 1 so basically if at uh, at this position we are having a set bit we going to increase our count by 1 okay we going to increase our count by 1 and after this loop after this loop we will mod it by 3 will mod it by 3 okay now how 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 we will get the answer one thing we can store it uh, it Uh, in something like string and after that we going to find the actual value of that particular binary string so we uh, we do not require any space so we do not follow that particular approach so instead we will initialize a variable the answer initialize to zero okay now what we will do for every position we will do a simple bit manipulation thing 
we do answer plus equals to one and and let's suppose if we are at bit zero from the right hand uh, from the right hand side then then the value of for that particular position if we are getting set bit as one it would be one okay so one left shift okay uh, c left shift c left shift i so let's suppose if we are getting 1001 so for this particular position we are having c c that is basically one zor uh, uh, one left shift zero would be one so for this particular position the answer would be one now i equals to one and we are getting c equals to zero so zero left shift by one it would remain zero so answer should remain one the same case for the next bit position for the next bit position we have one shift to one two three three positions now it it had become eight so one plus eight will give us nine so we are correct in our approach okay we are correct in our approach and from here from here what we can do uh, so this would be it and from here we'll definitely return our answer so this approach requires a time complexity of 32 into n and a space complexity of order of 1. So if we go by the rule and neglect the constant, we are having time complexity as order of n and space complexity as order of 1. So this means that we have solved this particular question in the given time complexity and space complexity. So this is the particular question I need to discuss with you. If you have any doubt, please feel free to ask and I will surely leave the link to the code of both or three of the possible approaches in the description document. Okay, bye.